Have you ever wondered if AI can generate an abstract that's so real, so compelling and convincing that even a world leading expert can't tell it's fake? That's the theme of the test in our AI experiment series that we're doing today. The test is inspired by Alan Turing, who developed the well-known Turing test, which had five criteria to see if machines could exhibit human-like intelligence and slip under the radar. We are doing the equivalent of the peer review Turing test. Now, I've invited my colleague, Greg Martin, who's been an editor of the journal Globalization and Health, well-published researcher in his own right, to bring on, catch him live. He doesn't even know that we're going to do this. And I've asked him to guess which is which. Do you think he'll be able to spot the difference between the human version and the AI version? Let me just add a disclaimer. Don't try this at home. I never recommend taking AI-generated work and trying to pass it off as your own. We've got a full video showing you the right ethical and legal way to use ChatGPT and other advanced AI tools to enhance but not replace your research. So in setting up the experiment, we took two real papers, ones that I was actually a co-author on, one from my earlier work and one that's much more recent. And what I did is I stripped out all the data except for the abstract and title. I fed that in to the most powerful ChatGPT and had it generate a similar exact same in magnitude word length abstract formatted for the specific journal, which you can see I did with the prompt here. Now I've intentionally chosen one to be a commentary where AI for the moment seems to excel better in narrative work and one that was an empirical paper with quantitative data and analysis to see if there's any variation in how well it could perform and do on this peer review tour test. So let's flash over to Greg Martin, who really needs no introduction in his own right. He runs a very well-known global health channel. Uh, he's been an editor at Globalization and Health and published numerous papers. Really excited to bring Greg onto the channel to play our Spot the Difference AI game. Again, as I bring on Greg, I want to encourage you to play along with us and see if you can spot the difference as well. You might want to pause the video as we introduce each abstract, take 30 seconds to a minute, and make your own guess before seeing what the real answer is. All right. Hey, Greg, thanks for joining us. Okay. So today we're going to play a little game. We've got two rounds. We've got two abstracts. One is mm -hmm. human and one is AI generated. And you have to guess which is which. <laughs> This is, oh, David, great to be here. Always nice to see you. It's been too long. And just so that people people that are watching this, just so that you know, like David literally described the format of what we're going to do about 30 seconds ago. So this is literally coming to me, you know, as you're watching it, I'm getting this information and very excited, kind of a bit daunted, uh, but happy, happy days. Let's do it. Off the cuff. All right. So I'm going to uh, share with you because you've been an editor for so many years. You're used to at a glance making judgments and deciphering dismantling papers. So I'm going to share with you the first two abstracts. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds for each of them and you've got to decide. Round one. Fight. Okay, here I go. Abstract one. Okay, show me the other abstract. And here's abstract two. Okay, the second abstract is human. The second abstract is human. Am it's I right? Correct. It's correct. <laughs> well done. First round goes. <laughs> wow. To okay, Greg. I felt the pressure. I some pressure, I felt, right? I did some feel pressure. the pressure. What? Uh, we we got another round coming up. What gave it away? I think it is a little bit of the structure of the sentence, the way words are pulled together. Have, having done quite a lot of writing where I use ChatGPT to help me, and I'll often like, I've used Canvas on ChatGPT where you can work with the AI to develop the, the text. Yeah. And the things that I often change are little subtle nuances where I kind of feel as if that's not the way I would say it. And I've gotten used to seeing those. So I couldn't tell you exactly what it was I could see in the second paper that made me feel it was more human, but I, I had that sense of this is is more the way I would write it, if that makes I, sense. I, I sometimes have a sense that there's a certain smell that ChatGPT has, and it used to be blatantly obvious certain words that only ChatGPT would use over and over, but it's become more and more subtle. Um, how confident were you in, in your quick interruption to today's video from our sponsor? Mate, if you want to work with a real person and not AI, I would encourage you to check out our elite mentorship and support pro programs where we work directly together in a one-to-one -one capacity to help you develop a personalized plan that's going to get you from where you are to defining a winning topic all the way through to successful publication. We go so far as to offer a publication guarantee that if you show up, you do the work, 
We don't do it for you. That would be unethical, just like AI doing it for you is unethical and just not a good idea. We work together each step of the way so you never feel lost, you never feel stuck, so that you optimize your chances for success. And we guarantee we're not going to leave you hanging if you show up and do the work. We are going to see you through to the finish line. That's a big ask. That's a big offer. And no one we know of can match this level of commitment with the real results that our students have had. If you're interested, book a call with the link below and see if you could be a good fit for us working together in an intimate way. In no, I was pretty sure. I was pretty sure. You're pretty Some, sure. Sometimes, okay. sometimes I find stuff that's written by ChatGPT, it's almost too good. You know what I mean? It includes like a level of detail and insight and nuance that you sort of think like, well, well, you know, it's, it's, al it's almost a bit too polished, I find sometimes. Yeah. Now, uh, so something I've also seen people do, I haven't done this, but I've seen people take some of their own writing, drop it into ChatGPT and say, when you write something, use my style. And I think that that does change the game a little bit, you know, because then it picks up on the, the sort of the nuances of how it is that you, you write and tries to yeah. incorporate those ideas into the way it generates um, text. Definitely. That's actually a really good idea as we continue our AI experiment series. Greg, let me let me go on to round two. Okay, okay round two. Paper, the first paper I shared with you was a commentary. I've got a different style of paper. Um, again, a real paper. But one human abstract, one AI abstract. Let's see if you can guess which is which. Uh, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, hit me. Round two. Fight. Okay, show me the other one. I think the second one is the AI, but I'm not confident. Second one is the AI. Final answer. I'm not confident at all on this one. Uh, I'm going to go with the second one is the AI, but, but uh, tell me if I'm right or wrong. Second one is AI. Flawless victory. You're two for two. I just two had to create two. a little bit of suspense. And oh my goodness. Well, you, had well, me on the, you had me on well the edge done. of my seat there. Well done. Which, uh, what, why did you have less confidence on this one? You know, this, this one, even the second one, it's generated by AI, but uh, it's got a very human feel um, in terms of, you know, the text. I felt like the first one started off by kind of setting the scene and telling the story a little bit more. And I just kind of felt like that's the sort of thing a person might do. I really wasn't confident. Like, I, I, like I, 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 just, I, again, a little bit of an instinct and probably picking up on little nuances that are difficult to actually articulate. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're not quite at the passing the peer review Turing test for AI, but for the empirical paper here, it was actually closer than the commentary, which is interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, what I, like something, um, and David, I'd be interested in your thoughts on this. I mean, I've had uh, some sort of colleagues of mine that work in university environments sort of say they're a little bit concerned about students that are just going to be using ChatGPT to write their, you know, uh, papers and things that they have to hand in. And increasingly, as I think we're learning, even from this experiment today, AI is becoming better and better at mimicking human styles of writing. And I think Claude is even better than ChatGPT in general, in terms of like kind of a, a human way of, of producing text. And so, uh, you know, there was this concern in the universities, what are we going to do? All the students are just going to use this all the time, blah, 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 blah. And one of the things that I said is I said, well, look, for some essays, why don't you just make it compulsory? Like you have to use a large language model to write this essay. And the thing you have to hand in is your prompt conversation. Okay, we'll read the essay. And of course, it's going to be good, but that's not what you're going to get marked on. You're going to get marked on how it is that you used a language model to produce the output that you were going for. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I think that's going to reflect the reality of how we use AI as a co-pilot and already journals call for the ethical black declaration of how you used it in the manuscript. Uh, so I think it, we need to recognize it's part of the game. It's not going away and start adapting our tools and instruments to integrate it. But uh, Greg, fascinating insights. This is the end of the beginning of a conversation. I hope you'll come back and join us. And as ever, learn a lot from you. And thanks for letting me put you on the spot for our two rounds of AI human battle. This was really, really fun. Let's do it again. Happy days. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> awesome. <Peace. laughs> I'll tell you what, that was a whole lot closer than I thought it was going to be. How about you? Let me know in the comments. Did you get that right? Did you get it wrong? Are you impressed with what AI can do? Or do you not think it's anywhere even close to passing the Turing test? As Greg said, there's sometimes is a little bit of a, an odor or a smell to chat GPT content, but it's getting increasingly subtle and fainter and fainter. What do you think? Is AI going to replace humans in research or is it going to be the model that I think 
never going to be able to do so, but become like our co-pilot buddy sitting on our shoulders, helping us accelerate and go faster and faster. And listen, if you want to work with a real human, real feedback, check out the links below and get on a call with me. Let's see if we can be a good fit to work together. Stay tuned for more in our AI experiment series. I'll see you there.